now, later today, the independent <coughs> inquiry into child sexual abuse will publish its <coughs> final report following, would you believe, an eight-year investigation. The probe is expected to criticise senior officials for denying abuse allegations over many years. Well, Maggie Oliver, former detective and whistleblower at the Greater Manchester Police, joins us in the studio. Good morning to you, Maggie. Good morning, Mr um, look, How much of a moment will this be today? Because, you know, a huge amount of money, time, effort, resources has been poured into this. How hopeful are you it might change things? What I always say, Isabel, is that I always hope for the best and expect the worst. Right. And my involvement with this was as a core participant in the strand that looked at organised networks, so grooming gangs. Um, and for me, it was a massive missed opportunity. You know, they, you know, when you look at grooming gangs and organised networks, um, it is a problem that affects virtually every town and city in the north of England. You know, whether you think of Rochdale, Rotherham, yeah. Huddersfield, Sheffield, you know, Telford, all of those towns and cities, not one was included in this strand. They picked areas like Bristol, Warwickshire, Tower Hamlets. So the first question, and it wasn't just myself, yeah. it was other core participants, myself, Harriet Wistrich, Parents Against Child Exploitation, um, victims questioned why those places. Um, the other thing I would say is that um, victims' voices were completely silenced from this um, part of the ICSA review. Um, there was 10 days given to it, what is a national scandal. When you look at the Lord Janna um, section, or Noel View looking at Cyril Smith, you know, they had 20 days. Um, they allowed one victim to give um, um, actually incredibly um, insulting presentation to, to the report. She wanted to go to the toilet. They wouldn't even let her go to the toilet. I heard it. Um, my statement was reduced from 50 pages to 18. Harriet Wistrich, myself, none of us were allowed to give evidence. Virtually everybody who gave evidence was a representative of the state, uh, the police, social services, those who I would say are responsible for having failed generations of children. So, so you fed all that into this report? No, massively. And, and do, you, do you know whether they've taken that on board? And was, no, we, we were blocked out. You were blocked out. So how do you feel about this report coming out later then? I think it's not really worth the paper that it's written on. Oh, gosh. Um, millions and millions and millions of pounds. I put my trust in Alexis Jay because she knew what went on in Rotherham. But I fear that um, it has not been independent. Um, I, th the other thing I would say is that there will be recommendations, no legal obligation on the authorities to, um, to respect what they actually come out with. Mm. So the, 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 the holes in this are... Why? Why, have they, why, do you think, why do you think they ignored you? <sighs> because they didn't want to hear what those who were not involved in these institutions had to say. Um, you know, we all spent two years... Uh, two years working with the inquiry. Um, this isn't just me. It, you know, people who are working with victims and survivors on the ground. And if you block them out of, a, um, of an inquiry mm. that is all about their experiences, for me, it's not worth yeah. the paper that they are written on. Yeah, I mean, on. that's a huge statement. So it's not worth the paper that it's written on. And I suppose the purpose of this is twofold. One... In theory, it's supposed to give um, some solace to the people who've been through this, that this is being taken seriously, which you presumably think it hasn't given. No. And the second is to make sure it never happens again and that lessons yeah. are learned. I mean, there have been previous recommendations. Do you feel as though we are getting better now as a country, as institutions, the police, the councils, at protecting children from child sexual abuse? I think the situation in the criminal justice system and in the care system is as shambolic as what is going on in the government today. Oh. Um, and I fear for the children uh, trapped in that system. The, you know, police is... Yeah. is in crisis. Um, you know, Greater Manchester Police are in special measures. The Met is in special measures. And again, it's the same kind of attitude. You know, don't look at what is really going on. Say everything's fantastic. You know, we, we've got this under control. When you're working on the ground, like we are in the Maggie Oliver Foundation, you see every day where it is failing. We are trying to work with police forces. We are doing our very best to highlight those cases where victims come to us for help, saying they are being let down. We are making a little bit of progress. I think there is an awareness in the country now that it is a mess. But those in 
positions of power need to listen, need to act. And I would just say to any victim or survivor who needs help to come to the Maggie Oliver Foundation and we will advocate for you legally. We will offer you support um, and help you put your lives back together in the best way that we can. Yeah. Yeah. This, this was just, um, actually, it was a, a real missed opportunity and it's a tragedy really, because as a country, we are facing monumental problems. Um, this was an opportunity to look at this particular failure going on in our country. From what I saw, um, I'm not holding my breath that it will make any difference at all. Yeah, so why is this failure happening then? Is this a lack of money, a lack of resources? Does it need to be reorganised? I think... Are we talking about... Comp forget, in fact, part the money for a second. Are we talking about just being competent? We're talking about a system that has been neglected for so many years, two decades in the police. You know, we've got police officers who are not trained. We haven't got enough police officers. We've got a serious lack of good leadership. Um, we've got, you know, uh, cover-ups and pretense that everything is hunky-dory. It really is not. And when you, you know, you're not paying police officers. But I don't blame police officers on the ground. They are out of their depth. They are being led by people who are just trying to, the political pawns, um, the, the, the failures, the, the problems go deep and wide in policing. Courts have closed yeah. down. Barristers on strike. CPS not charging with the right charges. You know, a child who, who was made pregnant at just 13, why was her rapist not charged with rape? Mm. We had a fetus. We had DNA. Other children being criminalised as a result of their abuse. These are the things that we see every day, and they are not isolated. Um, exact, they are not rare, um, isolated cases. They are being repeated all the time, children being criminalised, um, victims being pushed away. Th there is a real lack of uh, would, would, would priority. More, would more money in the justice system and in the police and in the care system, more care workers, more police officers, would that help? More it, training? It wouldn't do any harm paying police officers properly to do a proper job. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got PCSOs and I'm, I'm not you know, belittling PCSOs, but the training needed for somebody to investigate what is a really difficult case. Can, you know, it, it isn't just money, though. Um, it is a much bigger issue, and I think we need um, a royal commission into policing, into the criminal justice system, and it isn't just me saying this. You know, serving police officers, ex-colleagues of mine, cannot wait to get out of the job. Yeah. Um, they are in... They're desperately unhappy. They can see the system's not working. Um, you know, we've got police like tinkering around the edges at, you know, Twitter feeds and policing people's thoughts. Mm. Get on and protect these kids. Reprioritise where their resources do mm. go. Mm. Put the right people in the right, right jobs. Sorry, I could no, go no, on no. forever. I know you're going to come back later on in the programme, yeah. um, but essentially 87 recommendations expected to come out from uh, this report today. You're saying not worth the paper it's written on. Uh, really damning assessment from uh, Maggie Oliver there. But let us know your thoughts at home this